If you're a nurse, a respiratory therapist, or someone else who works in a hospital setting, you already know you must adhere to a strict dress code. There are several reasons for this, including maintaining a professional appearance and protecting yourself and your patients from acquiring an infection. In this video, we'll discuss the most common hospital dress code requirements for medical professionals. So, if you're ready, let's get into it. First, you must wear closed-toed shoes. Not only is it more professional, but it's also to protect your feet from spills and other accidents that can occur in a hospital, such as an accidental needle stick. Can you imagine dropping a dirty syringe on your foot without protective shoes? Do your feet a favor and invest in a good pair of closed-toed shoes specifically for work. You'll be glad you did. The next requirement is to wear scrubs of the right color. Most hospitals will require you to wear scrubs while on duty. Scrubs are a traditional medical uniform and are easy to clean and maintain. However, not all scrubs are created equal. Different colors of scrubs are typically worn by different medical professionals in order to easily identify their role in the hospital. For example, nurses may be required to wear blue scrubs, while respiratory therapists may have to wear green. This is not always the case, but most hospitals' dress code policy requires certain workers to wear a specific color while on the job. Another dress code policy that may or may not be a requirement where you work is to wear a lab coat. Lab coats are recommended because they look professional and they serve as an extra layer of protection against blood, chemical spills, and body fluids. Not to mention, they're often made of flame-resistant materials that can help protect you in the event of a fire. And besides, hospitals often tend to be colder in temperature, so a high-quality lab coat can also help keep you warm while at work. The next requirement is to wear your ID badge. Most hospitals will require you to wear your identification badge at all times while on duty. This is for the safety of both patients and staff members. Your ID badge should be clearly visible and worn in a prominent location such as your chest or lapel. Not to mention your ID badge is likely what allows you to get access to certain areas of the hospital. So be sure to wear it at all times. Number five is to keep your uniform clean. It should go without saying, but it's important to keep your uniform clean and free of wrinkles or stains. This not only looks professional, but it also helps to prevent the spread of infection. Be sure to wash your scrubs after each shift and iron them if necessary. You're not only representing yourself when in uniform, but you're also representing the hospital in which you work. Number six is to avoid wearing jewelry. While you may be tempted to show off your personal style with some bling bling, it's important to keep it to a minimum while on the job. This is because jewelry can easily become caught on something, which could potentially lead to an injury. It can also hinder your effectiveness of certain skills, such as sticking a vein or artery with a syringe. In addition, jewelry can also harbor germs and bacteria, which can be dangerous in a hospital setting. Speaking of bacteria, you must also keep your fingernails clean and trimmed. This also helps to prevent the spread of infection, as dirty or long nails can also accumulate bacteria. In addition, long nails can make it difficult to perform certain medical tasks that require precision with your fingers. The next up is to keep your hair neat and clean. Yes, this rule applies to both men and women. Gentlemen should keep a clean haircut and facial hair that is well-groomed. Ladies should avoid loose, long hair that could get in the way or fall into a patient's face while providing care. If you do have long hair, be sure to tie it back in a low ponytail or bun while at work. Number 9 is to avoid wearing strong fragrances. While it may be your thing to wear perfume or cologne, it's important to avoid wearing strong fragrances while working in the hospital. This is because some patients may be sensitive to strong smells which can potentially trigger a headache or even an asthma attack. In addition, strong fragrances can also be overpowering in small spaces, such as the patient's rooms of most hospitals. The next requirement is to avoid chewing gum. It may sound ridiculous, but chewing gum is actually not allowed in most hospitals. This is because gum can easily become stuck to a medical equipment or fall out of your mouth while treating a patient. 
Not to mention, it's just unprofessional to smack on gum while communicating with a patient, family member, or coworker. The next requirement is to wear the right tools. In some cases, medical tools become an extended part of your uniform. For example, respiratory therapists must wear their stethoscopes at all times in the hospital. This is because they need to have quick and easy access to perform auscultation and listen to their patient's lung sounds. Similarly, nurses and doctors have certain tools that they must wear while on duty, such as a watch with a second hand and a pen light. I'll drop links to some of our top recommended tools down below in the description. But if you want to support the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you'll enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we're not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.